Hey guys, what's up? It's Zach Hammonter here, Legendary Fishing. Today we're in Dallas, gonna be trying to get some alligator gar. Uh, here it is a little bit after uh, one. <clears throat> and this is gonna be our first piece of bait. So you know what that means. If you do get something, it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a big fish, so. <clears throat> uh, please, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And see what we get. I'm sure if you guys can see a little snaky snake. He's gonna cruise right in front of us. It's like a banded water snake. Completely harmless. I was gonna try and catch him if he came in closer to shore, but uh, he looks like he's staying well away from us. <clears throat> right quick. So, where we are right now is Dallas. This, uh, here it's kind of a, a sort of like a pond that the trinity river uh feeds so that far shore over there is actually the trinity river um right on the other side of these buildings here these apartments is the actual river bank and these trees i'm not sure if you can really make them out uh is also the uh river bank so this is a little pocket that the trinity river makes there should be alligator gar in here uh we're gonna be trying for alligator gar uh, i got the rod pod we're gonna be trying for some carp or buffalo um just see what we can catch today uh depending on how it goes today we may be back on the trinity river or we may go up to uh grapevine lake to catch buffalo so hoping for a gator gar um I'm not sure exactly where this fits in the regulation area, but uh, I was told earlier today from downtown Dallas all the way to Houston on the Trinity River, you're only allowed to keep um, one alligator gar under uh, 48 inches. This is above downtown, so I'm not sure how that regulation really plays out, but either way, uh, we really wouldn't be keeping too many of them. All, we really wouldn't be keeping any over that size anyways because uh, we will if we do get one that's under 48 inches we will be keeping it uh to eat but um anything bigger than that we'd probably let go anyway so uh, let's see how it goes getting baits out Alright guys, so we went ahead and uh, called it a day at that spot for now. Anyways, uh, we fished from, I think it was a little bit before 2 to it's 5 o'clock now. So, <clears throat> 3 hours just say. So. Um, we had 2 hits as we were picking up and uh, getting ready to go from what would appear to be gar. I mean, I was using, well, you seen the size of the bait I was using, so uh, it was most likely gar. Uh, just the first one got hung up in another line and it was one of my carp lines or buffalo. So I was reeling it in because I thought I had a bite because it was moving. And uh, I could feel a fish pulling on it and everything. Well, ended up, I got hung up in the other line somehow and the, what I felt pulling was the gar on the on the other line <clears throat> which did not get the hook in its mouth recast and say 10 15 minutes later pick back up and the fish was pulling it <clears throat> I was letting him pull line he stopped to the point to where I thought he had dropped it but I just let him letting it sit there <clears throat> and it started running again as you guys could see, I reeled down, set the hook, 
nothing. So uh, we went ahead, called it uh, for that spot for now. We're at our hotel, checking in now. We're probably gonna go hit Walmart, maybe get a little bit more tackle, weights or something like that. And then uh, gonna go try and hit some other spots. Uh, we may go back to that same spot later on this evening or tomorrow, but uh, as of right now, uh, we're just gonna go check out some different spots. Alright guys, so we're at spot number two now. Look, the and you've been to Dallas before you know where we are. And the river's up. Probably 10 to 15 feet. What I'm gonna do is use a smaller piece of carp first to see if I can at least just get a hookup. And then later on we'll try for a, for a big fish. Once we can catch something, we'll try for a big fish later on. So Try us. Wish me luck. out here again uh, spot number one from yesterday <clears throat> we had a little little bit of luck right at the end of the oh, hour stop here um, had a couple of not, uh, good runs and missed the fish last night uh, underneath that bridge had one good run right after we got there and that was it really uh, ended up losing some of my tackle there so came back to this first spot already seen some fish roll uh some gar and carp or buffalo um got rod out over there with a float <clears throat> lost some other float and i only had one other one with me spinning reel over there uh just on bottom no weight and then off over in the distance carp or buffalo rod setting the the rod pod so we're gonna be here till about lunchtime and then uh, pack up and go to Grapevine Lake where I'm very confident we will catch some buffalo. So uh, just gonna see how it goes. Hopefully get agar. I'm not even hoping for a big one anymore. I'm just hoping for a gar. Um, I looked on Fish Brain. There, are, there have been a few catches here, mostly small. Um, which would be perfect size for eaters but uh as much as i'd like to see a big 200 pound gator gar tail walk across this you know pool here i don't think it's gonna happen this trip let's see what happens all right guys we got a runner got one taking it you can see this fish is taking line we're gonna let him run with it for a little while big treble hook so hopefully we can get get a hook in this fish way 
got one on. They don't feel very big, though. Gator guard, hell yeah! <laughs> Do I have a hell yeah? He's not a very big one, but it's a go. It's a big gator. Wow, oh, big. It's a... We got one. <laughs> baby one it's an eater though I just wish we could get his grandpappy <laughs> finally after what, four years since the last one I caught this is the first one I got on video <clears throat> hey chill out chill out fish He's got a bum die. <laughs> there we go. Alright, let's get the hook out of him. And, uh, get a couple of pictures. Get in there. Oh. <laughs> Alright. All right, guys. So that little old gator gar and his alligator gar, no doubt. Um, weighed uh, eight pounds, two ounces, and was three three feet on the dock. I mean, like it was on the line. So it is a gar that we're. It is a fish that we're going to be keeping because uh, I mean it's a small one. It's it's perfect eating size. It's not a mature fish so it's not laying eggs it's not a spawning fish uh if it was a big you know if it's a good size fish it is if it was the size that i'm really hoping for then yeah we would let it go but uh <clears throat> i mean we, we do eat gar so it's not gonna go to waste or anything like that um i may do a catch and cook kind of deal you know show how to clean it uh i've done them before but it wasn't a entire uh like catch and cook thing it was just a this is how i do it so um may do that but uh right now we're just waiting on another fish let's hope for another one another runner what i'm gonna do hopefully we get a hook in this one also i'm gonna set the hook on this fish and then i'm gonna talk, hand it off to jessica and she's gonna reel this one in this will be her first jar that she's caught like this, so we, we've snagged them before, but we'll be the first one like this. Right, go ahead and try it. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, yeah. That's a bigger fish. That's a much bigger fish. Oh, look at him. Look at him out there. That's a big cat. That is a big cat. <laughs> I hadn't seen too many cats roll like that. Yeah, as soon as I set the hook on that one, I, I could tell it was a bigger fish.
<laughs> All right. Yeah, that's it. Blue cat, blue cat fish. Ah. There you go. We're trying to get big gator gar. We got that small one, but. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> blue cat fish. Wow. That's, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get, we're gonna get this fish unhooked and uh. <laughs> See, get, uh, get back with y'all here in a minute with a weight. All right, guys, so here we go. That's a 13 pound, 10 ounce blue catfish. Not really what we're after, but we'll definitely take it. Uh, we will keep this fish also, take it home. Uh, it's almost a three hour drive, so we're gonna, we're gonna put some meat in the freezer. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get another one. All right, guys, so I put my carp rod out with a piece of carp on it just to see what happens uh it's a small piece it's a uh small hook it's my carp rig i just literally instead of i guess turtles were eating the corn off of my rig so instead of putting more and more and more corn on it i just put a piece of carp on it to say see what happens 20 pound uh copolymer no Maybe that is it. Anyway, 20 pound line, light rod, chunk of carp, and gar territory. We gonna see what happens. Tiny. If it's a gar, I'd probably say it's about the same weight as the other one. Maybe a little bit smaller. Oh, there we go. Alright guys, so that's it. That's all we got. The one catfish, one gar. We're back home. It's uh, about 9.30, almost 10. Um, I'm going to clean these fish tomorrow. As you can see, I do have ice on them. Two bags of ice. There's the gar. There's catfish down there, if you can see him. So, <clears throat> I'll do the, the uh, not necessarily cook part tomorrow, but I'll be doing the cleaning, show you how to clean a gar, how I clean a catfish tomorrow. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I know there wasn't but two fish. We fished two days, probably 24 hours, as many hours as we could fish, and got two uh, two fish. It had plenty of runs. Um, Y'all are going to see that because I'm going to include it in the video because if not, then there's not really going to be much of a video. So, uh, but that's it. That's what we got. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we did <laughs> of, of course wish there had been more fish involved but it's fishing not catching hey guys it's monday afternoon um just got off of work a little bit ago um came out and we're gonna work on showing you how to clean these fish so you got the alligator gar and also have a blue catfish <clears throat> uh, i'm gonna start with the alligator gar because it's fairly common that people want to know you know how to clean them so what i start out with a hatchet or uh, you can also use a machete <clears throat> to cut through the the scales across the back i have just a regular fillet knife 
Um, also a electric fillet knife that I'm going to work with also for this alligator gar. Um, I may use the electric knife just to um, keep from wasting any meat. Um, it is an alligator gar. I don't get them very often. You know, this is the same way I clean any other species of gar, but uh, for me personally, alligator gar are kind of a special fish. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. <clears throat> Alright guys, so this is how to clean an alligator gar. Um, I'm hoping I can get this camera angled right to where you can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, this is the same technique that I would use for any gar species. Um, I have the hatchet have these catfish skinners so these catfish skinners what you're gonna do I'm gonna straighten this guy out right quick make sure he's good and straight all right good to have a towel with you also um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this back fin here hold it up now I'm gonna start chopping right here Now this isn't the way everyone does it, but this is the way I do it. <clears throat> um, if there's, you know, there's several vi videos out here that uh, show how to clean a gar, and there are many different techniques. This is the one that I've always done. Um, but let's see if we can get this going good. Hopefully be able to get it all off on one strip. One strip. <clears throat> These bigger, the, well, the bigger the gar is, the actually the easier it is to, uh, to to clean. I got my just regular fillet knife here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut back here a ways and cut down in between <clears throat> the scales. Do that on both sides. Same with up here behind the head. Cut down. Right, those scales come to a point, <clears throat> make a V. And I'll roll him over cut all the way around the other side all right now I'm going to actually use this electric fillet knife for this part try and keep from uh, wasting any meat
one down on that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to uh, hold up the slab of meat you can get off of one of these. So I'm gonna go right here behind the head. The spine runs right here. down the side and go so the ribs are running right here at the tip of this this knife you know the the ribs are running right down through there so what I'm gonna do is cut over the top of the ribs to the head all right and there you go so of course I can clean it up make it look a little better but uh <clears throat> white meat boneless not a single bone in that fillet now of course you know like any fish you're gonna have a little bit of red meat but that is a slab of alligator gore Keep it simple. You do it on the same side, uh, the same thing on the other side, and just if you see, if you can see here, the ribs going right across the top. So what people do, of course, you know, it goes from behind the head to the the anal fin here. <clears throat> so there's ribs, and what happens is people. You know, go to you know, fillet it like you would a bass or a catfish. You have all these ribs, and they're like, oh, it's full of meat, the bones. Not the case. You basically have back strap. All right. So uh, I'm not going to worry about showing you guys the other side, um, but I will show you the, the meat once I get done with it. All right, guys. There you are. You got fillet on one side fillet on the opposite side what i'll actually end up doing is going ahead and taking all this all these scales off <clears throat> and i will dry them and i tend to i like to make jewelry out of the scales um basically native american jewelry uh, i already have a, <clears throat> a big alligator guard that i caught several years ago that i still have scales i still make necklaces and stuff like that out of um i'll dry the head and keep the head um check them teeth out but uh i just love fish with teeth and these ancient air breathing fish are just amazing and and i i do respect these fish um that's why yeah you know, <clears throat> if you're a bow fisherman or something like that and you're watching this video do not waste gar or bowfin or buffalo they are a native species they do belong here they are vital to the ecosystem um <clears throat> i started I, I started bow fishing at about i think about 12 years old and uh yeah i mean i shot gar i shot i shot whatever um but gar <clears throat> a lot of gar in louisiana and i didn't know what to do with them everybody i'd ever talked to said they were nasty they were trash fish and i was raised not to waste um so i was like well i enjoy bow fishing and it is a lot of fun but um so i, I decided to try and clean them and see what they tasted like i liked them and so now when i do go bow fishing i kill just enough gar to a uh, big enough gar to make a decent meal um <clears throat> same with buffalo and i generally don't shoot bowfin anymore because they are decent eating but there's a lot of prep work in it um for the way i do it so this fish was caught on hook and line uh you know fair chase as some people call it it's within uh 
Texas uh, um, regulations. So I went, went ahead and kept it. Uh, gonna make a decent meal out of it. Um, next is gonna be catfish. Okay, so here's the cat. We're gonna make a little decision. And it's underneath this <clears throat> bottom lip. And what I've done is put a hook in the tree. Now, what you're gonna do is take this cat. Now, of course, the bigger ones is the ones you need this. But, uh, get him up here. <clears throat> you hang him on the hook. That way, make sure he's on the hook. So, get him on the hook, straighten down a little bit, the rig mortise, you know. <clears throat> and <clears throat> now that he's on the hook, let's see if I can point, yeah, there we go. Now that he's on the hook, what I'm going to do, I'm take my knife, and I'm going to cut a V right in the, behind his head. Cross. It's cutting through the skin mostly here. Now this is a perfect one to really show about you know cleaning these uh, cats. A uh, smaller one you don't have to go through quite all this. You don't have to hang it up if it's a little small cat. But you're gonna start behind his head, right along his spine, and cut all the way down to his tail. A little bit sharper knife would help. All right, now that I hit that, <clears throat> this knife with that sharpened stone a little bit. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. watch yourself with this holding it I'm holding him by the tail right now might not be the best there we go alright so the reason you do this is so that when you take the skin off you can take it off the strips um, it's a lot easier to do than smaller strips So what I did, <clears throat> sorry about the noise in the background, it's what happens when you live in a neighborhood, you go across right behind the fin, I know that's all the way cut. Now what happens is I'll start on this side, pull it off, and then when I come over here and pull it off, it'll all come off in one piece. Also, um, I'm going to go ahead and do it, uh, I'm going to cut along the underside also um, because of just how, how big this fish is and be a little bit tougher um, if you have I don't have that strong of a hook uh, this is honestly the biggest fish I've cleaned uh, biggest catfish I've cleaned out here um, normally I would have stainless steel it's just an aluminum little it's an old um, Fish scales, digital fish scales hook. That should be good enough. Get on this side. Cut all the way, all the way down to the belly. And go down to the tail. All right, 
good enough. Here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this corner up here and I'm gonna peel it down. See there? Easy as pie. Just pulling it right off. There you go, there's one side done. This side, pull it down. All right, there we go. I'm <clears throat> done with the skinning. Now, what I'm gonna do is take my fillet knife, put it right up next to his spine, and go all the way down. All right, now once you pass, make it <clears throat> past his body cavity and go all the way through with the knife. Cut all the way through. Now I'm gonna make a couple more passes here at the spine. Make sure I got it all, all the meat separated from the spine. All right, then there's a bone right here, right between my thumb and that knife. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go in right here and go over the top of it and go over the top of the ribs come back out now it's still connected a little bit down here cut all the way through through up here to cut it away from the skull and not done there you go catfish dinner tonight what I'm gonna do I'll cut it into chunks about like that and I'll <clears throat> fry it any of this extra meat that's left on or uh, even some of the rib uh, rib meat, cut that, make nuggets out of it. Get this other side real quick. Now that I'm past the body cavity, go all the way through. Keeping your, your blade against the spine. Go back through, make sure it's completely disconnected. I'll cut away from the spine. Again, find this bone here. Go right on top of the ribs. Once you get past the... Uh, mm, body cavity I'll get, keep calling it that try and be a little bit more professional with my terminology but, uh, once you get past there you can turn it go back around now again it's a little bit butchered up there but good meat uh, I'll pull this little strip of skin off here in just a bit, minute but uh, again, any meat that you've missed, any chunks, you get back in there, and cut, and actually like this right here, it's real thin, batter that up and fry it real crispy, it's great. 
and neighbor's dog just started barking great okay so there was the catfish cleaning next will be the cooking all right guys i got I got my grease heating up and my oil rather I got my cornbread flour mix there's a bunch of other spices in here the fish a little bit of belly meat that i just chunked up but uh here's one of those fillets that i got off of that fish so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna wash it off get all the blood off of it any kind of debris that could have came from outside and basically i'm just gonna start up here at the top this would be where the head would have been and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about an inch or so and just cut it into a chunk. Get a little bit of fat right there and trim that off. But there's a little chunk. I'm going to throw it into cornmeal. Cut that fat off. But, uh, yeah, nice white chunk of meat. Also, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and get down here, cut that off just for illustration purposes. This is what I hate about <clears throat> going and getting fish from like a restaurant. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So, as you can see, right here, it's red. This is your fat. That's the fat that's in the fish. And what restaurants do not do is trim the fat out. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you got your, where your spine would have been, right down the middle, your lateral line. Take your knife, kinda cut at an angle. You see, <clears throat> most of it's out. I mean, there's still that layer, layer of fat, but you have most of it cut out. So, what I'm gonna do? Take it, lay it on its side. pull most of it apart nah. anyways so that's all fat right there you can see how dark that is throw that away and yeah there's still a little bit left on that piece but for the most part the fat's gone now I would do that with the whole thing with this bigger fish <clears throat> wasn't really able to get it as well with, with the whole fillet still intact that's why i cut it in half go in an angle see a lot of it's gone there is still some left let's see big old chunk of fat just nasty nasty fat there are some people like it i don't some people like the skin left on and that just whoop, i can't do that <clears throat> but yeah that's how i de-fat my fish i'm gonna go ahead and keep trimming up you guys will probably see it once it starts cooking Alright guys, so here's a gar filet. I've already went ahead and cut it in half. Washed it up. Um, just gonna do a little bit of trimming. Try and get some of this skin off. It'll be a little bit, make it a little tough. But, um, 
for the most part, it's just really nice, clean white meat. Like I said, this is the the inside part. This is from what the scales would have been laying on this side. So as you can see, there's a little bit of skin, um, not nearly as much fat as is on the uh, catfish. They're not a fatty fish. It's a very pretty lean meat. Uh, and because of the way the scales are, how heavy they are, you actually, I've found it best to cut gar into smaller chunks. Um, if you do not, they, you can get some pieces that are uh, fairly tough, which the texture of gar is um, similar to a pork chop or uh, maybe a, a chicken breast. That being said, as well, here's a perfect example. There's a, a tendon that is right behind the head. The the far, you know, the first couple inches behind the head is where that tendon is. As you can see, that white right there is that tendon. <clears throat> right there. Cut just that top piece off. And there, like I said, there's that tendon. Actually, this piece, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the tendon itself out. And save that little nugget. The rest of it's fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these in half. Like I said, um, smaller the piece, the more tender it is, uh, the easier it is to chew because of the texture. So there's cutting the, the gar up. Um, like I said, there's not a whole lot of trimming. Um, what you would just do is just cut, just trim this fatty, uh, this red part or dark colored part off. This is the skin that was left on it from my knife. Um, otherwise, it is a very clean white meat. Um, I would actually take this gar over that catfish any day. Folks, grease is heated up. I'm gonna start dropping this catfish in there. Now I've got uh, Tony Satry's garlic powder, onion powder, and um. That's about it in this uh, flour and cornmeal mix. wait for it to start floating or give it about eight minutes eight to ten minutes It'll be good to go all right guys here we go there's your catfish fresh out the fryer you put it in this bowl here got some paper towels in there to catch that grease um, what works best is if you have a col uh, colander you set inside of a large bowl to uh, let the grease drain out into you know the, the bowl in the bottom that way your your fish stays crispy and it doesn't get soggy with grease i keep saying grease i'm talking about oil you know the, but anyways
So there's the first batch of the catfish. Now let's work on the first batch of gar. <clears throat> Shake it down. I'm going to do the same exact thing with the gar as I did the catfish. Just let it cook for you know, several minutes until it gets to the color that I'm looking for. Next batch shook up and ready. <clears throat> All right, guys, here's the gar. Some gar nuggets. Perfectly cooked. Golden brown. <laughs> it's gonna be some good eating. batch going in guys yeah, so this right here <clears throat> is my secret family recipe um tartar sauce basically and it is um none of your business on what the hell's in there don't have to make a guess at it i ain't gonna tell y'all y'all my family secret guys here we go we got alligator gar blue catfish dip <clears throat> Let me choose which piece I want to eat. There we go. One piece right here. Dip it. Piece. That's the alligator guard you can see. How white that is. So, like I said, it has kind of a pork or chicken texture. Um, where the catfish, now this is fresh, so I'm gonna have to dig through it a little bit and get a cooler piece. Oh, no, 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 that was hot. Here we go. Again, let's we'll see. And the catfish is a little flake here. Um, I mean, catfish is catfish for the most part, unless it's a flathead. They're usually a lot more uh, flavorful. With this, uh, you no know, 13 pound blue cat. I mean, white meat, still juicy flavorful good eating well I cooked all the alligator gar and I only cooked one fillet of the uh, blue cap because like I said we prefer uh, gar over catfish it's just kind of a um, I guess upbringing, yeah, you know, it's kind of a staple food for Louisiana uh, for some people. <clears throat> um, if you have never given out given gar a try, and you're catch uh, and and you're catching them, um, go ahead and give it a try. I mean, uh, also if you do not like gar. And just let them go. Don't kill them. Don't waste them. Just let them go. If you're having a hard time catching other fish because of gar, I mean, move. Go to a different spot. Gar or native, 
garble on here. It is a federal law against wasting native wildlife, uh, fish and wildlife. Um, going out and killing gar, killing fish, and throwing them on the bank and wasting them is no different than wasting a deer. Well, that's my little rant for the end of this video. Uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making the video. I'm going to enjoy the results of the video. See y'all next time.